All right, I want to show you this cow, and particularly this cow because you'll recognize her. Well, most of you will recognize her if you follow the channel who it is. And of course it is Mudini. So Mudini is just calved and she's had a lovely, very uniquely marked heifer calf, Frisian heifer calf. White face, black dot on one side, and a lovely kind of a shaped black area on her left hand side. It's very different to the type of calf we'd normally have, which we mark pretty much like Mudini herself, about 80% black, 20% white, so this gets something different. Funny thing about it is I put Mudini in here at half ten. I put it up on my Instagram on my story about her. I was supposed to meet a lad an hour after that, which I decided to cancel, and I'd cancelled this appointment several times, but, but I just didn't want to leave her. All is fine, the ones you leave is the ones that can give you the trouble. She didn't do anything then, and I just looked at the clock, and half one came along, and she still hadn't done anything, and I said I would have been back from my appointment. But that's just the way these things go. But yeah, that's another one bites the dust. I just wanted to show you Moudini. Just as I'm in here with the calves, last night we had a calf born. I put it on the Instagram. Kind of a, a different scenario. The cow was about 10 days by her time, which isn't unnormal. So we're watching her tight this past couple of days and she was bringing up nicely. But I had this sneaky suspicion that something might be wrong. And I even said it on her Instagram page before she had calved that I had a wee bit of a sneaky suspicion about her. Moral story, we put her in the calving pen and within a very short time of putting her in the calving pen, she had feet out. Feet weren't in a bag and never was a bag present when the feet came out, so it already had bushed inside. So it didn't give her very long when I seen that I came up. The feet were well out, but she wasn't making any real proper effort to calve, so normal circumstances, we left the calf. We leave her alone, give her a more time, but on this occasion, I put the ropes on and I took the calf from her. And I'm very glad I did because the calf was nearly a goner. Meaning that the fluid had went down the calf's lungs. This is what can happen, the calf can choke. We revived it, the calf was okay. It didn't need much of a reviving, but it did need help. The calf is okay, we have a lovely, healthy Frisian heifer calf here. It all seemed good, um, until I looked at the calf properly and noticed the color of it. Now, calves sometimes can be born with a yellowy kind of a mucus on it. People that lamb sheep would see it too, and humans, I'm told as well. I haven't seen that personally, thankfully, but too long calving and stress can cause that. But one of the things this calf was covered in was dung. It looked like a calf that was rolled on the slats. Anyway, I was told that it's not really that unusual. There's a name on it which I'll put, I can't for the life of me pronounce it, but I'll put the name of it across the bottom here. The calf then got a lovely uh, feed into it, three litres, within the first hour and a half. It wanted more. This all happened but nine o'clock last night. This morning I spotted a problem. And I have to go in to show you the problem and it's not a nice thing. And I'm hoping that it never can be cured, but I'm hoping there's something the calf or animal can grow up and live with. Um, well, as you can see, it's starting to pass its first manure here, which I'm glad to see. It's fine till it gets to about here. And if you look, now, I'm going to turn the calf around here. Very me good lady, just turn yourself around here. You go up there. It's walking the best, legs is fine. But its back end is not fine. So the calf is dunging at the minute. But look at that tail. That tail comes down here and curls around and stays tight to the calf's body. It's a twist here on the calf's tailbone. So the calf is deformed there. But I'm glad to see the calf stands on its four legs properly. Its legs look okay, all the joints look okay. Its head's okay, everything else seems to be there. We may not be out of the woods, it may not be the only problem. So we'll just have to play it by air and see how things go. And another thing that makes the life a wee bit harder at the moment is I twisted my ankle the other day. And kind of hoggling on it a bit, just doing something stupid, as we all do, but I live. Anyway, that's them fed up there now, and with the slats all cleaned down. Um, the cows will have to come out of this shed. I hate doing this. hate bringing them out of the shed in the daytime because they think something's up. And the yard can be quite slippy, it's semi-dry now. Start to jump and lep and play, and that's when falls come. I've seen it happen many years ago where a cow went out. And just letting them out like this here. And she fell, she broke her leg. And that was the end of it. One of my good cows that was in calf to calf within a few weeks. And that was a disaster. And I'm always very weary and it's a job I don't like having to do, but they have to come out of the shed. We are going to mix this tank that's here. It's right up on top of the slats. So out they have to come and just fingers crossed they don't mess around too much.
Right, so our cows are now out in the yard. Agitator's in the tank. In for lift off. Now the tank is about an inch below the top of the slats, so it's a wee bit tougher to mix. I'm hoping there's plenty of water in it. If it was a foot lower, I could mix it easier, where I'd be blowing the slurry along the top and letting it mix around, but I can't really do that now, because if I do, it's going to blow up and the slats in the inside cover the whole cubicles and all. So I'm angling the spout down into the slurry and hoping it'll mix that way, which it will. It just takes a little bit longer, I find. One question for you now that it is mixing. Is it worth putting the spout on the top of your agitator to actually pipe across to a different tank? So when you're mixing, you're also moving slurry to a tank that's beside you. Is it a good job to do? Because I priced it up and it cost a few pounds to do it. But if it's as handy as to say, then it's probably worth for me to do it because my tanks are all very close. At the minute, I'm taking tanks of water out of it, just moving it over to the other tank, which isn't the right thing to really be doing. It's just a hassle putting on the mixer, putting on the tank, back and forth. I'm just wondering, would it be handier to put a spout on the top of that and just pipe it straight across as I'm mixing it? That way you're mixing the slurry and you're not leaving a tank tough then come springtime. So we're on the actual second day now, and I have threw over about, I've lost count, maybe 15 load. We have that tank three quarters empty now. I also took a couple of load out of the other two tanks at home as well. So that leaves us about a foot and a half, two foot-ish of space on our two tanks that are at home. And the other one, which three quarters emptied, is a smaller tank. And the fortunate thing about it is it can fill with water very quickly. It's a tank that fills up very fast. I've talked about it before. It's just the way the shed was built and it's quite low. We have it down now anyway and kind of under control for a wee while. And I'm looking around today. It just, it's nice to look out now, but it wasn't so nice an hour ago and the whole night before that and the whole day before that. And it's not supposed to be great from another hour on for another day or two. So that's the way it is. That is one cracker of an evening, it's amazing. So we've only got two hours of it, and it's probably going to disappear now in the next hour, but it's just unreal the way it lifts your spirits. Just everything about it just makes you feel better. And that's what we've been lacking for the past 10 months, you may say. But anyway, we have a brave bit done. This one here, I don't know if you can see that with the camera, but there's about a good three foot left in that tank yet of space. But we're not going to put any more in, we're all right. Great bonus just to have this thing that we can do this to it because without it we'd be, well, we'd be like a lot of people. We'd be struggling to find a way of dealing with slurry um, because our ground is swamped at the minute. Anyway, my phone's ringing on the tractor. Blow on, do something else. Finish making this morning. I have a problem with this feeder. I can say these feeders, I've said it before in videos, they don't give much trouble apart from an odd rope breaking and I might actually replace the ropes for wire. Sometime a few people mentioned that's a good job, so ah look, the ropes are cheap. I replace them every six months, so it's not that terrible bad, so it's not a big job to do either. But for some reason, this one here, I've addressed this one on the video before, but it's one that does give a little bit of bother now and again. Um, at the minute, this one here is not pulling at all, it's completely seized up. Um, I had to put a new spring on it here the other day, I had a spring just laying. Up, I have uh, kind of a cabinet where I keep any bits and pieces I take off or old bits of scrap before I get rid of it. And find springs, fuses, anything I can find of it, bolts, nuts and bolts, I all just strip them down. I take bits and pieces off and this spring, and God knows what it actually came off. But I have the other spring sitting here that broke. And there it is there. And that wee by broke off the end of it. I don't think it's worth even trying to weld that. But anyway, it broke a few days ago and we managed to keep this one in and it worked a treat for a while. A wee bit of a lighter spring as you can see. So the tension wasn't as good. It was pulling a wee bit easier. But now the mechanism itself has stopped working. I'll just show you here. So you've got to pull and that should pull down. And at the minute, it's stopping male. But if I put you in here and look, if you watch that mechanism there, it's supposed to go way down and then come back up to about here. You'll see that it's barely moving. So in here, we have two cups, leg cups. You pull the lever, it just basically turns the cups. The cup holds about two kilos of meal and it dishes down and drops it in front of the cow. Once the cup comes back up again, the hopper loads the cup, all manual. It just falls down with gravity into the cup, then you tilt it again and another 
two kilos falls down. But at the minute, this cup here is refusing to move or not really moving much. So there's a couple of things that could be wrong. It could be actually blocked up above. Inspection point, let's open it up. Have a wee look. No stainless, it's even better again. So everything opens easily. So the mechanism itself is very straightforward, but I can already see by looking in there. Do you see that? There, that's a build up. And that would stop the cup from moving. So it could be just as simple as that. That is actually what it is. Because when I pull this lever, you can see that. See that build up there? Sorted or not. I'm just gonna open this in here and compare the two. I'm not wrong. It's not up for you know. So that might have been part of the problem, but it's not all of the problem. That cup you can see there, it's still sitting at a kind of 45 degree angle. This one, it should be exactly like this. This one's up the whole way, so it's able to fill straight down. So to me, there's a build-up, maybe here as well. And I do see what could be a culprit, but there's a lid on every one of these that you can lift up. A couple of lovely big spiders in here too but there's a sensor in there and it's just a little paddle switch when the male falls up against it, it lets it know it's full it's shocking simple everything's fine in there but this lid isn't on this lid sitting back and that allows damp moisture to get in the top of the feeder and the reason why it's not in the right place is i probably opened this at some stage to look at that paddle switch or maybe to clear a bit of mold and stuff something that was in it and i didn't actually put the lid on right and it's as simple as just laying that lid back on there and it's on now and that could leave moisture to get into the mail which should cause the mail to harden up get moldy of itself and that's probably blocking our feeder down below just as i fully extended that a lump of mold just fell straight down but when i look up there now it looks clean so i release this it should just slap back now it does. So now this hopper is full of mail, it's after filling from the chute, and all it has to do now when I pull the rope is dump that. Just as simple as that, and you can't really fault it and you can't really go wrong with it. So I think my problem is fixed. I'm going to clean this one here when I'm in here. There's probably a bit of build up around it, but otherwise put it back together again, job's a good one. Alright, so the job on hand now is we're going to take this old fridge out. This is an old fridge freezer. It's all emptied out here. The lights were on, but nothing else works on it. Um, when the power went off, I don't know, maybe it done some harm, but these are just our fridges that I pick up. They're actually was free. I don't care what it looks like on the outside, but it's very handy for holding all your medicines and stuff. The freezer itself was great for basins and colostrum just for freezing it, but although now it's not running, so we're just picked up another one here for 40 euro, which is only about a half an hour's drive away. So I'm going to take this one, leave it in the landfill, and go and get the other one. But you can see this buck here. Girl just standing behind me, and that is a mouse. I don't think he's gonna make it. But he's gonna have to bury that one. There you go, one. Just hold it there, hold it there for a second. That'll get us going again. I didn't actually get the one that I went originally to get because the people who were supposed to meet weren't there when I turned up. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't work out. So when I was sitting outside the house, I basically went on the internet again. One popped up in Cavan, which wasn't far away. It was only about 10 minutes from where I was sitting and it just worked out oh, perfectly. I did see it working and yes, the people uh, I picked it up with were suckler farmers that did know me. Um, I had a lovely chat with them and nice people. I knew straight away that what I was getting was going to work. Now, hopefully that'll keep us going for another couple of years. Let's go and do something else. All right, so I'm over here on the other farm. You haven't seen our heifers in a long time. Just pushing back the sides in front of them. I'm about to give them their meal now in a wee while. Um, and there's Ruby. You haven't seen Ruby in a while. I'll give you a better look at them in a few weeks when we get them out into the yard and get them ready for hopefully going outside and you get a better look at them. But as you can see there, they're fairly even. Although there is nearly three months between the youngest one and the oldest one. Um, youngest one there being behind. It's just coming through here now. And you can see the difference between... It was very little, January and mid-March. We did clip them. I didn't film that, but we did clip them many a week ago. Some people don't give in to the clipping. Otherwise, see the benefits of it. I wouldn't go without it once I started it. I just think it makes such a difference to cattle, the way they thrive, and it's not a hard thing to do. 
But one thing I do want to show is wet bales. So camera is a horrible thing to pick up the quality of silage. Now I haven't tested this silage, but I can tell you that these were drenched wet. So if you want to go back and watch the video we made when we were doing our second cut silage, you'll see the hassle that we had. Quality of the stuff itself would have been poor because we had a couple of growths growing through itself. We just couldn't get our silage cut with the bad weather. And then we had to come along and cut three quarters of it and then wait another week or two before we got the rest of it cut just simply down to wetland. And we went in on one of the best evens we thought we could get and we mowed it all out. And when we were just about five acres of the end, it started to rain, it started to pour. We just continued on, mowed it in the wet, the rest of it. And then it rained the whole way through baling. It rained non-stop. So we baled it right away. No time in between. The baler was in the field while the man was still mowing. We took the bales in. They were heavy. They were wet. They couldn't have been wetter, putting it that way. When I opened them, I'm so pleasantly surprised because it's not going to be what you call top quality. But there's a nice leaf in it and it looks a lovely colour. It certainly smells lovely. So I'm very happy with it. It's funny, everybody's different. I've always found that wet bales are not nearly as bad as bales are too dry. And you end up with fusty, mouldy bales. And that's when I've seen when the problems is. These couldn't have been wetter. When you open them, the water flows out of them. But the stuff is good. And we have had next to no waste. I'd say maybe two grab loads out of about 150 bales used. I wouldn't feed it to cows that are calved. That's why we kept our silage pit for them. But for these cattle here and dry cows... It's a hundred percent for that. Oh, another thing before we leave and go home is these three bushes that are hanging here. Now, I get so many messes and I've explained it before what they're for, but I just want to actually show the benefits of why they're hanging there. So back two years ago, and it would have been the second year this shed would have cattle in it from being built new. So on the second year, we got a hell of an out. One of the worst outbreaks of ringworm in our young cattle that we've ever had because it covered their bodies. It was like mange. It was horrible. And that was all filmed. There's several videos on it. And we tried loads of different things to try and cure it, try to get it off the cattle. It'd go away eventually when the cattle go outside with the UV light. But it was hard looking and bound to be very uncomfortable for cattle. Loads of people just said, Adrian, get yourself some male holly. That's the one without the berries. Hang them up in a few different places in your shed and your ringworm will disappear. It actually is a bit of science behind it. As the holly dies off, has an antifungal agent to it which basically kills off the ring more. so we put that up um, probably in a December of that year it was a bit late for it to take effect that particular year which it didn't really but the following year we had no ringworm at all and this year we have no ringworm at all and this would be the time of year you would have it here and I have to say it's down to the holly you probably didn't need to put up as much but my mother had a lovely holly bush in the garden and I always said it needed a trim so there you are before we leave today's video, I can't leave without giving you a final update on this calf here. It's about 10 days since you've seen that first clip. And this is the same calf in the same place. You can see the tail if you look to the side. But as you can tell, it's a feisty wee girl and as healthy as healthy can be. You can actually see it's actually a big calf. Probably the biggest calf here and it's the... No, that's the youngest one, but this one would be the second youngest. They're older, but she's much bigger. And she's feisty. When I shared this on Instagram, a lot of people messaged that they had calves very similar. Uh, maybe not identical the same, but had a lot of little problems just like that. And it didn't cause any issues at all with the heifers later on in life. And I'm hoping that's the case, because for now it certainly looks like that is the case. My worry was at the beginning that there'd be internal problems as well, and that would just be the only physical one we could see at that time. But seemingly, everything for now certainly looks good. We had our misfalls last week, this week it's been a bit bad on. But we're waiting now, we have about five cows ready to calve. And these girls here are being moved tomorrow. They're also being debudded. Um, the shed down below, we were out to debudding them a couple of days ago, they were a bit older. And these ones are just coming now to the time. Mad wants to see me, they associate me with food. That's why they start sucking, but little bits of stubs of horns there now just ready for debudding so we'll get that done probably this evening or tomorrow and get some of these moved down to the other calves down below and then bring these ones put jackets on them and move them up to here and one other thing by the way there is Mudini's calf phenomenal the way calves grow um, in the first week or so but there they are she's healthy and a lovely absolute beautiful calf the girls 
spoil these calves. Um, there's no doubt about it. That's why we have so many pet animals as last why. But they love this little calf. We have to get a name for it. So in the comment section below, you can put your names down there. Next Sunday we'll pick one. I'll not pick it. The girls will pick it. Whatever one's the most popular stands out. But remember, it's got that unusual mark and so maybe incorporate that in somewhere or other. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next one.